British Columbia's Aboriginal peoples were the first to grow food as a way to sustain themselves on the land that we now call British Columbia. European settlement-based agriculture was first developed in the early 19th century. Large-scale commercial farming eventually took hold in districts such as the Caribou and Similkameen, while smaller-scale specialized agriculture developed in the Okanagan Valley, Fraser Valley, and growing areas further north. By the 1950s, mixed farming was well established across the province. Up to this point, most farm owners and farm workers in BC were of European descent. However, as the decades progressed, the industry and workforce had started to change. Back in the mid to late 70s, we were starting to get a lot of different immigrants from different countries. We were starting to see an influx of new farmers, new Canadian farmers operating with a whole new generation of employees that were coming. But safety and knowledge of what safety meant was a non-starter. There was no one really trying to explain the right or wrong. We didn't know any of that stuff at that time. I came to Canada in 1973, born in India. My first job was to work in a farm. I found it very shocking that, you know, the way the workers were treated, not only just the working conditions, but the abuse by the labor contractor. They were treated like animals, you know, like no respect whatsoever. It wasn't a very pleasant experience for me to be there going to work in Canada. I was shocked. The health and safety agriculture industry in British Columbia was always ignored. You know, it was not a priority. We thought we were safe. Farmers were doing everything in their right mind to do things right. My father, when he first started spraying, he would mix chemicals with lack of better knowledge just with his bare hands in a five-gallon bucket. And those were just common practices that no one thought anything different of back then. There's no fresh water for drinking. There were no toilets and washing their hands in the ditches full of pesticides. Those kind of conditions were there which horrified me. That was not okay to treat them like that, but you know, that's how that practice was. Then I start talking to farm workers, what kind of benefits they would have, what kind of coverage they had, because they were not covered under either health and safety regulations or Employment Standards Act. None of that was available to farm workers. There was no compensation, no nothing. So therefore, no health and safety regulations. Can you imagine a job with thousands and thousands of people working at it, and, and the WCB has no jurisdiction to impose safety rules? All on the grounds that somehow these are still run by mom and pop and their kids who run the farm. This is a dangerous industry. Reality in farm work is a ton of machinery that's dangerous, tractors, harvesters, everything. It's dangerous. We thought we should do something. We had high hopes that we will bring a revolution because it's a really unfair treatment to the farm workers. But the reality was quite different. Farmers were being challenged all the way along. How can we do these things the most inexpensive, most effective way to make ends meet? And so labor was one element. We just did things accordingly, what we thought was right. To get the field work done faster, quicker, better, so that the farmer could eventually have a black line at the end of his ledger. Did you get one of these? That we had to go on the streets to deliver leaflets or on the farms, and we were threatened that they would kill us. They would break our leg if they step into their property. They didn't think it's a workplace. They think it was their personal property, nobody can walk in. So in March of 1979, we formed FWOC, Farm Workers Organizing Committee. We told them, if you speak up, your wages are not paid by the labor contractor or you have health and safety issues, we will represent you. Every month we would have a demonstration or a march in the field or just uh, have a public meeting. So we carried on and we signed up over 2,000 members in one year. I realized that there was a big uh, union of farm workers down south the border in California, United Farm Workers. So I read about C.J. Chavez and what they did. And so my question was, if they can do it there, why can't we do it here? 
Members of the Farm Workers Organizing Committee met with provincial labor officials today to press their demands for new legislation that will allow them to become a union. In 1979, we invited Cesar Chavez from California. We had enough support to form a union. He and I became very good close friends. He came over to uh, Canada, stayed with us, helped us. We marched together. Uh, then on April 10, 1980, we decided that time has come to uh, form the Canadian Farm Workers Union. And today, we have our union, first time in the history of Canada. You know, like we were on our, you know, mission. And when the CFU started, these people had no rights, zero rights. So what the farm workers did and the CFU did was they put them on the paper and put them in the news and put their plight in the government's face day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. So that union played a major role in creating the circumstances for improving all of this stuff. We got angry demonstrations in the downtown. Labor movement supported us. We got loss of strength in that time, and we made few changes, but not enough to give them rights as the other workers do. In 91, the NDP government came to power. The first thing NDP government said that they were going to cover farm workers, they were going to bring them under the Protection of Employment Standards Act and also the Workers' Compensation Act. In 1992, WorkSafe BC, working with the CFU and the Ag Council, brought together representatives to discuss and work on putting a new regulation together for the agricultural industry in British Columbia. We did call it the Ag Reg so that it wouldn't get confused with the Occupational Health and Safety Regulation, which was much greater in, in breadth than, than what they were using. New officers had to be hired and trained in order to go out and inspect the particular industry. When the regulations first started to come in, farmers just thought, what is this about? And it was looked on upon in the farming community, totally negative. You gotta remember, looking back from today, we have a lot better education. We know exact a lot more about it. But right then, you were living that window. You were about your farm. You were about your workers. You were about doing a job. You were about producing food. We all thought we were doing great. In 1993, when the regulations were developed for agriculture, uh, the Workers' Compensation Board, Board of Governors, had a resolution that established the development of the Farm and Ranch Safety and Health Association, which we call FARSHA. When I started on with FARSHA, it was a very contentious operation. You had CFU on one side of the table, and you had the farmers on the other side. We needed to collaborate and work together, and so we made a blend, and I'm very proud of the 11 years that I was on that board, that today I see what's come out of it and are doing a great job in promoting the safety on farms. Well, FARSHA is independent from the regulations. They are the people you can go to as an association and get information and help in making sure that you can comply with that regulation. So we worked very closely with the WCB and were able to get statistics from them, which was extremely valuable. They started to develop resources to deal with those high-risk activities. It was kind of a three-phase thing. Uh, the regulation first, having industry's own association to help industry along the way with what that meant, and WorkSafe making sure that they had the proper people in place as well. There was also another committee in place to monitor the transportation of farm workers, to make sure that they had their proper tires, their proper uh, seating and everything. In 2006, uh, agriculture was folded into the Occupational Health and Safety Regulations Part 28, specifically for agriculture. Basically, the whole regulation now applied to farms and ranches. So that was a fairly significant event in agriculture. Safety is a key. We are still working on it to make it even better. And through education, through the government, through WCB, and through farmers like myself who have served on committees representing the farming community to work together at a minimum cost to the farmers and the maximum safety for the workers. Is it safer today than it was 25 years ago for farm workers? I think in some cases it is. But again, what goes forward can go back. And so we need to do more. It's a story of sadness. It's a story of tragedy. At the same time, it's a story of success because people are willing to stand up. We will keep telling the story. We'll keep asking people to stand up. That's the only way we can have a safer workplace.